Ah, uh, Luke. Just as similar enough from the first two Gospels to provide a completely irreconcilable account of Jesus' life, yet just similar enough to the first two Gospels to maximize the repetitive tedium. But if you just can't get enough of Jesus misidentifying the properties of a mustard seed or eating dinner with a week's worth of shit on his hands, this is the gospel for you. As are the other three, because they're all exact same Pretty much, stupid story. Except, again, irreconcilably different. And joining us once more to try to squeeze yet more dick jokes out of the material we've already been through twice and still have to go through once again is my lovely wife, Lucinda. Lucinda, thanks for not divorcing me yet over this segment. Oh, don't worry. It would take at least uh, 33% more Gospels than this to get my lawyer involved Ooh, this here. Is getting scary. So before we go any further down that road of thought, uh, let's uh, dive right into the Gospel of Anakin's kid. So first of all, we learn right away that Luke is a much better writer than these other folks. Uh, for a minute, it's almost like you're reading a book that was put together intentionally. Yes, but only weird. for Briefly. a minute. Yeah. Right, right. Because after that, it's just clear that whatever person wrote the opening verse in a radically different style than every other part of the book was a better writer. Yeah, exactly. So we start off with some John the Baptist origin story, and that was kind of nice because like, he was – I felt like he was the Boba Fett of the first two Gospels. It was nice to get a little more flashback with yeah, him. Yeah, it's kind of like that, but instead of an episodic storyline, imagine if George Lucas had three of his friends all write the same book, and then he released them all as sequels of each other. Yeah, and they the same were all stories. approximately as good at writing as George Lucas. So anyway, John the Baptist's dad goes in, and he offers some incense, and he prays that his barren wife can have a kid. We've seen this before. So Gabriel appears to him, and he says, Man, do I have a kid for you. This kid is going to be fucking awesome. It's not weird at all. But dad makes the mistake of saying, Now, are you, are you sure about that? So Gabriel strikes him mute for like, Nine months. No, right. Reasonable lesson. Then, I guess. You're right, right. Then Gabe shoots over to warn Mary that God will be spritzing a little man juice on her in the near future. <laughs> right. So, forewarning. Gabriel has the worst job ever here. He's employed by an invisible date rapist <laughs> that wants him to go admit what happened and get retroactive consent from this woman. Yeah, right. <laughs> so Gabe starts trying to explain what happened. Mary gets all confused. I'm a virgin, so I have no idea what you're talking about, man. Gabriel says, listen, lady, I hate to burst your bubble, but I was right there watching when you – wait. You know what? You know what? That works. Yeah, you just keep telling everyone you're a virgin. I am a virgin. Exactly. You are a virgin. Why are you saying it weird like that? I'm not saying it weird like that. You're saying it weird like that. You're a virgin. <laughs> then Mary goes to John's pregnant mom's house, and they squeal and praise the Lord. And then John the Baptist is circumcised, and at that point, suddenly his dad becomes unmute, and all the neighbors are amazed and excited. And then he starts praising God, and about nine paragraphs into that, they're not as excited anymore. They're saying, we liked you better mute. <laughs> really. And in chapter two, we get the big census by Caesar. <laughs> so Mary and Joseph head over to Bethlehem to scratch their initials into a rock or whatever. Right. And the whole time, Joseph's taking shit from everyone. It's super awkward. Oh, hey there, Joe. You gonna you gonna introduce us to your virginal fiance yes. who <laughs> in no way has a visibly glowing baby shape inside her belly at this exact moment? Uh, yeah, you'd like to meet uh, exactly. your virginal fiance. And then, of course, Jesus' birth has to out-awesome John, mm -hmm. so we get that story again. Only this time around, the angel of the Lord shows up with a hundred backup singers. <laughs> That's how they describe them. And goes to the farmers that are sleeping in their fields to go praise the little hymen buster quick while they mm -hmm. still can. Mm -hmm. Then they take him to the temple and kill some birds just the way God likes it. Standard. Yep. Yep. And conspicuously absent from Luke's account of the birth, by the way, is the whole like Herod trying to kill him, mm -hmm. fleeing to Egypt, all that shit, kind of gone. Not even there. Mm -hmm. Right. All right. We go straight from birth, penis alteration, and dove sacrificing to him being 12 years old and having a combination <laughs> home alone searching for Bobby Fisher moment. Right. That's <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah, no way. And then we get this crazy huge inconsistency where John the Baptist gets thrown in jail before Jesus gets baptized. So... <laughs> According to Luke, he's just John the. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. Nothing about eating locusts or wearing the hair shirt or no. baptizing the Son of God. But no. right. we do learn that John was a fiscal moderate when it came to tax policy. So that was <laughs> yeah. It's like the C-SPAN version of Matt. Right. <laughs> Fascinating. Yeah, and speaking of internal inconsistencies, uh, then we get a genealogy of Jesus that conflicts with the one in Matthew on almost every single name. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, hell, they don't even have the same number of generations <laughs> yeah. in Luke. I did, I did that part wrong. And then uh, Satan appears to give Jesus' 
three riddles or whatever, and he goes on to tell all the people in his hometown that he's God. Mm -hmm. For which they run him out of town and try to throw him off a cliff. However, he's able to, like, roadrunner himself out of it with an anti-gravity sign, and he gets away. He wasn't entirely clear on what was going on there. Yeah, for for some reason, I guess demon wrestling isn't as impressive when it's done by somebody you you know. You know, Mm -hmm. everyone's sitting around there going, yeah, we yanked those demons out of that dude, but... I mean, when you talk about Jesus, the dude pissed his bed until he was like 13. I mean, we know this guy. <laughs> then we get the same leper healing, fish catching shit we got in both of the last two, except Luke's Jesus is less of a dick about it than yeah, a little the bit. prior. So John the Baptist hears about this stuff, and he sends his disciples to ask Jesus if he's the Messiah. And Jesus is like, you see me curing these fucking lepers, right? Who, who the hell else would I be? <laughs> what am I doing here? All right, then Jesus goes to eat at some dude's house, and some chick starts working his feet like she was trying to suck start him. Uh, so he forgives her sins. So <laughs> yeah, she, she's I all would right. too. And in Luke's yeah. gospel, Jesus and his apostles have groupies, apparently. This is the, uh, I believe, the first time Mary Magdalene even gets a mention, and apparently mm-hmm. her and several other women, quote, provide for them out of their resources, end quote. So just take that however you want it. No, I cream. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then it's on to rebuking wind, parables, and demon pigs once again. I just can't <laughs> yes. get enough of the demon pig story. It's like, no I sense. It's the weirdest <laughs> shit. A legion of demons is possessing this dude. Jesus is about to kill the demons. But then one of the demons says, hey, Jesus, do you mind if we become a herd of demonic <laughs> pigs instead? And Jesus does it. Yeah, yeah let's sure. see what happens with 2,000 pig demons. It's the worst, thing that w- worst case scenario, they all commit suicide so we can watch it. Or, wait, is that the best case scenario? doesn't matter. Pig demons starting now. <laughs> now. And then we reread some more stuff that we already reread right, before. But, but now this time Jesus sends out 70, like, Sub apostles, mm-hmm. and he tells him to curse every town that doesn't feed him, so that it can be destroyed when his dad gets home. <laughs> Very yes. important. Then we get the story of the Good Samaritan, and I guess back in Jesus's day, all you needed to do to qualify as a good was not leave a naked, beaten, half dead person on the side of the road. Not just qualify as I good, but right. like legendarily. Good. <laughs> right. yeah. So Jesus is uh, much more of a ladies' man in this one too, as we learn when he goes to Martha's house and her sister gets on her <laughs> knees in front of Jesus and stays there all. <laughs> All night long. <laughs> and Martha gets kind of mad about it. Jesus, yeah. I'm getting all this shit ready for you over here. I'm making food. Make my lazy slut of a sister help out. <laughs> and Jesus says, well, she's blowing me right now. So that's obviously <laughs> not going to happen. If anything, you should have been helping her this whole time. <laughs> Being honest, I'm calling, if I'm yeah. making a call on this. And Jesus actually said, Martha, Martha, Martha. <laughs> In my translation, anyway, I had no idea that that was biblical. Who knew? Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, though, I have to say, Luke was one of the toughest books to pick through. Yeah. Maybe the toughest so far, because essentially we're just reading the same shit we just mm-hmm. reread twice. But then once in a while, some weird shit will just crop up. Like in uh, chapter 11, 24 through 26, Jesus starts explaining how dead ghosts wander around in a house and then they gather up seven evil spirits just right in the middle of the house divided, cannot stand bit. That shows up for no fucking weird. reason. Weird. So weird. And is it just me, or is Jesus the world's shittiest house guest? Right. Constantly insulting his host, won't wash his hands, hogs up all the nard cream. Come on. I keep expecting somebody that invited him to dinner to say, all right, put down the goat and get the fuck out of here, you pretentious douche. I wish somebody you know? would, yeah. And so anyway, blah, 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 <laughs> you're God's slave, you deserve a light beating, blah, 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 I've come not to bring peace, but to make everybody get pissed at each other, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and don't get all rich and happy, you don't no, think that's whatever what you My dad do. could show up any minute, and we're all supposed to look poor and pissed off. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's his plan. And for some reason in Luke, waiting for Jesus to finish a parable is like waiting for the dude to finish a sentence. <laughs> like in chapter 13, he starts telling a story about there's a farmer and he's got a fig tree and it won't bloom. So he wants to cut it down. But a servant stops him and he says, let me rub some bullshit around it. And I am dying for that to be an analogy of how to make good Christians rub more bullshit around it. But then some <laughs> cripple lady shows up and he goes all squirrel right in the middle of it. And just never get back to it. I honestly think his analogies are so pointless and boring, you just don't realize when that they're over. Yeah, it's like with like my grandpa telling me a story. You know? Yeah. Oh, you finished. Cool. Did he not well, off, or is, right are now. we pausing? <laughs> yeah, right. Then we get one of uh, the Pharisee guys very clearly trying to entrap Jesus and catch him violating the Sabbath on, I guess, a, re- a hidden recording device that he had. <laughs> right. Hey, Jesus of Nazareth, why don't you 
Jesus of Nazareth, expend several jewels of work healing this guy with the awkwardly large face goiter on this fine Saturday afternoon well before sundown, Jesus of Nazareth. <laughs> and then we get the bit with Lazarus and the rich man. Mm. So we, we hadn't heard this one yet. So Lazarus is some bum living outside a rich dude's house with dogs licking the pus out of his festering sores. Mm -hmm. So he goes to heaven, and the rich person who wouldn't feed his dogs anything but bum pus goes to hell. And while he's burning in hell, he says, uh, hey, guys, any chance I could go back to earth for a minute, warn everybody about this hell stuff? And God says, fuck off. Nope. I already did Moses. <laughs> I'm not doing that shit again. Right, and the rich guy says, but the Moses thing, I feel like it was kind of vague. I feel like a you could just have somebody... <laughs> You know, rise from the dead. It'll really get your point across a lot better. And God says, absolutely not. That's stupid. Nobody's going to get involved in religion based on people rising from the dead. That's crazy talk. Right? I mean, what a bullshit Nuts. way to brush off this incredibly reasonable request. Like, if the stakes of the game are burning hell versus eternity in heaven, you the least you could do is make sure everyone knows they're playing. Right. And what to expect. Also, there was a lot more tacit approval of a slavery in Luke than Matthew or Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, like in chapter 17, Jesus is trying to make a point, and he basically says, that would be stupider than letting your slave eat before they cooked your dinner or thanking them for doing it. Yep. Mm -hmm. And yes, that's all meant to remind <laughs> us that as God's slaves, he doesn't owe us shit, bitches. Hey, <laughs> Christians, not sure if you guys are still reading, but if you are, maybe check out Luke 18. Jesus says right here that it's better to be a humble sinner than a self-righteous, Bible-humming asshole. True mm -hmm. story, right there. Yep. And he mentions that in several book. times, in fact. He mentions everything several times. <laughs> and then in chapter 19, we get the parable about the slaves that are each given a couple of bucks, and one invests it wisely, gives his master back ten times the money, another gives him five times the money, and the other one just buried the money and dug it up later. And, a, and apparently pissed. there was a, a risk-free interest rate in ancient Israel that right. all slaves yes, are supposed exactly. to know about. Supposed to be, get, me, get me some points on that? Watching the, the street, market. Big... Or something. Now, uh, we've, we've heard this one before, but I bring it up now because in Luke, it ends a little different with Jesus clearly endorsing killing the people that don't like you. Mm -hmm. He's telling this parable where the king here clearly represents God, and it closes with the king saying, quote, But as for those enemies of mine who did not want me to be king over them, bring them here and slaughter them in my presence. End quote. Luke, 1927. That's Jesus talking. <laughs> And, and, by the way, that's the end of the parable. No, yeah, there's yeah, nothing let's else. Over. Let's yeah. go. That's it. After that, Jesus packs <laughs> up his shit and heads to Jerusalem. And this is, by the way, where he's supposed to steal a donkey, <laughs> but he steals a horse instead. I, you know, you just imagine, like, you know, the guys over at Ken Ham's thing arguing that maybe, oh, well, maybe he stole both. And he's hopping back and forth between a rodeo <laughs> style on the way in. Or maybe he's we, we'll reconcile one foot this. on each, and he's, like, riding it like the two sharks, you know? <laughs> Actually, in my copy, I think he flew into Jerusalem on a turducken. Oh, I see. Oh, okay. So, I'm pretty sure that's how it goes in King James. You might want to check the different translations. Uh, and by the way, wasn't this supposed to be the kinder, gentler testament? Apparently, yeah. But you get Jesus talking about the end of times, and it's just as bloody and fucked up as the worst parts of Isaiah and Ezekiel. Really, yes. Yeah. So compared to the most horrible book ever transcribed, this one is, at best, mildly less horrible <laughs> right. than the other one. Then we find out a couple more things that Matthew and Mark forgot to mention, apparently. First of all, kind of a big deal, Judas was possessed by Satan. Right before right. he became the biggest traitor in history. Oh. That, they didn't mention that until now. You can't also, imagine how Luke we, verified that. <laughs> I have no idea, but <laughs> it's a big deal in this one. And when they're about to arrest Jesus and one of the disciples cuts some dude's ear off to stop that happening, Jesus magically heals the dude's ear on the spot. Regrows an entire fucking ear. But only one of the biographers has that detail, really? Right. The, the ear regrowing? You guys Everyone talked about that? the ear, but no know, one else remembered whatever, that it was... highlight that part? <laughs> <laughs> also, enjoy being given a specific example of the taunting Jesus got from the guards who arrested him. It says they blindfolded him, started hitting him with sticks, and then saying, Prophecy now! Prophecy! Who hit you that time, Messiah? Who's right. hitting you? Who's hitting you? <laughs> it's the funniest thing anyone said in the Bible. It was yeah. awesome. Yeah. And, and then we get to the snuff film portion. Yeah. Uh, sorry, right? Yeah. And, but now now, this time around, Pontius Pilate is less of an evil bastard and more of like a impotent wimp. Yeah. But he seems like dead it's set against crucifying Jesus at first, but then he does it anyway because he can't handle all the yelling, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Pilate actually says, no, I'm not executing this guy. I've seen no evidence that would justify, crucify him! Right. No, yeah. no, you think? I, I, feel, right. I feel like I'm going to get blamed for this if we crucify him! <laughs> uh, 
Uh, maybe I'm just being bad. All right, good point. Good point. Yeah, nail him up. Nail him. I'm just being bad. I'm just do it. I didn't think about it that way. So they crucify him again. Joey buys his corpse for what he swears are moral reasons again. They stick him in a tomb. Again. again. <laughs> then Jesus rises. But this time he keeps popping in and out of crowds like a ghostly Waldo. Right? And then he rises to heaven and everybody goes to the temple and prays happily ever after. You no, know, it's it's really interesting it's to kind of so... watch the post crucifixion part of this narrative develop within the gospels. I mean, we we start with Mark where Jesus never appears reappears at all, or at least they don't feel that's worth mentioning, mm-hmm. all you get is the empty tomb. Then in Matthew, there's like a little hint of a risen Jesus. <laughs> now in Luke, he's, he's eating a fish with him, he's <laughs> hanging out, or he's walking to different towns. So it's like it's like listening to a friend tell an ever more elaborate version of the car accident he was in, you know? Right. It's like, I jumped over four buses, and then I went to the... Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, sure you did. I'm kind of pissed off, though. Three Gospels in, and nobody stuck their fingers into Jesus' crucifixion wound yet. Right? I'm starting <laughs> to feel cheated here. That's Come on. Pissed off. All right. Yeah. yeah. Well, as, it's as, got as, extra holes and everything. As much as I'm, like, it's going to happen eventually, and I'm looking forward to a good, like, stigmata finger band <laughs> just as much as the next guy, but I am still happy to go a couple Bible list weeks before we get there. So, Lucinda Heath. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, as always. Sure hope the next book retells the exact same story without changing <laughs> anything. Because I can't get enough of this I'm gonna story read it that we've read again and again and again. Fantastic. Yeah, a fucking <sighs> man. Maybe it'll be the same. <laughs>